Jarvis, drop my needle. Hey Parasites, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. It's episode 719 and we are going to look at Venom Lethal Protector number 3, the 2002 version or series. And uh, and this one is, again, a little bit of a head scratcher, but I'm kind of moving past it. So we'll touch on it a little bit about the continuity errors or possible continuity errors, but also the most likely way they're going to wrap that up and fix it, um, which is fine. Uh, but we're going to get into this. It's David Michelini is the writer and uh, Ivan Fiorelli is the artist who does a great job. They both do. But I feel like this book is very, I don't know, it just a lot of things just happen to fall into Eddie's lap. It's It's not him actively going out and progressing the story in some ways. He, things just happen to him, and I I don't like writing like that. I, I don't like when other people write like that. It just, everything's so coincidental and just happens to, you know, things come to the characters without the characters earning stuff or moving towards a goal in any way. And that's what this book feels like. It's just, uh, it's just Eddie, you know, starting off, it's called Sins of Omission, which is kind of funny because I feel like they're admitting, like, themselves paying attention to continuity on some level but again it's easily fixable continuity so i'm not going to dwell on it too much i've talked about it in previous videos but we've mentioned in previous videos how they could fix it and they, that's probably how they will so we'll get into that um but in this issue it's just like eddie's you know at the life foundation working with the scientist lady uh she comes up with a way to make you know make it to where he can't be hurt by sound anymore and then they t try it out because uh, on a, like a robot that they made that can mimic Claws, uh, Ulysses Claw, uh, the villain from Black Panther, you know, played by Andy Serkis, who uh, was also the director of Venom 2, so full circle. Uh, but Claw, who first appeared in a Fantastic Four issue, I think, along with Black Panther, stole stuff from, you know, Vibranium from Wakanda, and that's kind of his origin story. Uh, got his arm cut off, built himself a, a sound hand that could shoot sonic waves. So the Life Foundation has a robot that has similar powers, and they sick it on Venom to prove to him that he doesn't, that he actually can withstand sound now. And he does. Um, but then he, after he does, he's like, okay, thanks. And then he smashes the robot into the wall and says like, yeah, okay, thanks. And she's like, why'd you do that? Like, you didn't need to destroy the robot. And he's like, eh, it made me feel good, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and she's like, great, I'm in charge of this project. And, and now I got to like answer for this million dollar robot that I just got destroyed. Um, she's like, so Eddie just kind of leaves. And then when he leaves, again, just things falling in his lap. He, he's looking after Ann Wang, I think. And then he sees her fiance go down a dark alley. So he follows him and it turns out that guy is like a psychiatrist and he's selling patient information to drug dealers uh, to capitalize on their, you know, Achilles heel or their weaknesses, you know, as far as, you know, prescribed medicine goes or drugs go. And, uh, and so he's like, you know, selling their private information and making a buck off of it and then getting them hooked on drugs again, which might make them eventually come back to him as a psychiatrist or something or a doctor. So it's just awful. I mean, just an awful human being, obviously. So Venom goes in the alley as Venom or Eddie goes in the alley as Venom, threatens him and tells him to get out of town. And then the scene just ends. And I guess that's going to kind of explain why Anne never got married to this guy. So then I was kind of like, then why put it in here if you're just going to buy issue three? do that unless the guy comes back in the next issue or somehow works for the life foundation we find out and then venom kills him i don't know we'll see uh but uh but either way i just felt like a very brief thing to just kind of chuck in here and that, and that, like i said that kind of speaks to the book overall the art's great by ivan he does a great job but i am just the michelini's writing is just you know david's writing is just a little too um just fall in your lap kind of stuff it's just too coincidental like everything just happens to venom He's not really pushing the story along. So when he goes, uh, and then he, there's like a fire that breaks out and he's running down the street. And because of the serum that he took that is supposed to get rid of his, um, you know, allergy to sound, uh, he actually turn, starts turning into a clown. And then he turns into a firefighter. And so the suit is like malfunctioning. And again, while all this is happening, I know this takes place, or it's supposed to take place between issues 298 and 300 of Amazing Spider-Man, but there's no communication between sim the symbiote and Eddie. And so I would assume that the suit would be against getting injected after it spent some time at the Baxter building. It would have some kind of protest against getting injected uh, with something. It doesn't say a word. Eddie just, you know, gives a sample over, no problem. Uh, then they, now they're just transforming at will, turning into a clown, turning into a firefighter, and still the symbiote says nothing about it. So I don't think Michelini is very good at writing Venom. I, I think he's uh, good at writing Eddie, 
but I don't think he's really good at writing Venom. And I know this series is supposed to be about the development of them becoming Venom, but by now, issue three, they should start having a more dialogue with each other. That would have been a neat writing technique, is if he started off and there's no internal monologue captions, it's just Eddie talking and then maybe responding. Uh, and so we just assume what the suit's saying. And then as the series goes on, start adding in those bubbles so that we start seeing what the suit says, showing them becoming more and more to where they're not, we are, you know, or you know, I guess that's Carnage as I am, then, uh, I am Carnage, but just showing them becoming more of a we group, like the two of them talking together. So I, I just would have liked to see more of that in this book, a more actual character development, because right now it just feels like, hey, who are some villains Venom's never fought against? All right, let's throw in these three generic guys. Let's throw in Chance, who shows up at the end of this after uh, Venom goes back to Life Foundation and he, sh he says, hey, my costume's glitching. And she's like, I'll work on it. He's like, you know what? I don't feel like I want to wait around for that. And then I guess he attacks her or scares her and she screams and it just kind of cuts away. And then Venom's out in New York and then Chance just happens to fall in his lap. And the two of them fight for a minute and then Chance reveals that he, like Hydra Man, was hired to fight Venom. Uh, by somebody, which I'm guessing is a Life Foundation, possibly, or maybe it's someone else. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, but I just thought that was funny, where it's just like, it's okay. Venom just standing here. Oh, he sees Anne uh, Wang's fiance. Okay. Oh, he's just uh, standing on this bridge. Oh, Chance shows up. Uh, oh, the last issue, uh, Hydra Man shows up. So everyone knows to go hunt him down, but yet Spider Man has no idea he exists because it's be before issue 300. This all takes place, so I don't get it. And there's even a cameo of Spider Man in here where there's a fire that breaks out and Spider-Man swings by it. And because Venom's over there, they can't meet in this story, right? Because that would contradict issue 300. So Spider-Man just says, oh, there's a fire, but my spider sense t is not tingling. So I'm guessing no one's in danger, which I'm like, this, is it? I thought he, I thought it tingles when he's in danger. But I guess he's like, there's, I guess in his mind, he's like, there's no super villains. So I'll let, you know, the fire department handle it or something. And I'm like, it just doesn't feel very Spider-Man <laughs> at all, actually. So... I, just, I was just like, why put that? In, why even put that scene in here? So, um, so yeah. So the thing I keep harping on is like when this takes place. I'm assuming it takes place between Amazing Spider-Man 298 and 300. But those three generic villains from the first issue, we find out and we get definitive proof in this one because the Captain America knockoff guy is still alive. He gets a job offer to enhance his powers and possibly go take down Venom. Uh, I'm guessing he's going to respond to the same ad that these other guys did, and. And so he's he, he confirms that his two friends died. So the Spider-Man and Hawkeye knockoffs are killed. Um, now, granted, that's what I was saying. I was like, how can that be if they show up 60 issues after when this is supposed to take place? Um, but I guess the answer to that is, well, I guess they could just replace them. You know, they could just hire two other goons and give them those outfits, upgrade them a little bit. And then those are the three that fight Spider-Man in issue 367. But I actually had a whole timeline of events here where I was like, okay, there's Spider-Man 298, which is Chance's first appearance and Life Foundation. So that's cool that he's here in this book and he's possibly working for the Life Foundation because they both appeared in the same issue together uh, for the first time. Then there's Amazing Spider-Man 300 where Spider-Man and Venom fight for the first time. So again, that hasn't happened yet, <laughs> according to this. Um, and I thought, if I'm not mistaken, I thought Spider-Man and him fought and Spider-Man was in a black costume, but I think I'm just remembering it wrong and he was in the red and blue because he swings by in this issue in the red and blue costume. Um, but I think that makes sense. Uh, then there's issue 316 where they have the you know rematch around that time. Uh, 347 where they have, or th there was also 333 with Sticks and Stone, but there was 347 which has uh, them on the island and doing that whole story. Then you have 361 which introduces Carnage. Then you have 367 that introduces those three knockoff guys. So I'm going to just guess that those two just get replaced by two other random goons and that the Captain America dude's original teammates are just dead, um, which is fine. So that's how they can fix that continuity thing. But I kept getting caught up on that because I'm trying to figure out when this takes place. And, and if it is before Spider-Man even knows Venom is out there, it's just funny that all these other people seem to know that he's that Venom's out there and they're hunting him down. Um, and somehow Spider-Man is oblivious to this whole thing happening in New York. So uh, whatever, it's, it's very convenient writing. Like I said, it's, it's mindless fun, sure, but emphasis on the mindless part, in my opinion. The artwork's great, I love the artwork, but David Michelini, like I appreciate what you're trying to go for here. And I'm sure this is an idea that Marvel probably came up with on some level and said, hey, we could work with Michelini, do like a lethal protector origin story, which is fine. And I get that that's kind of the overall gist of this, but man, is it just uh, 
There's just so many unnecessary questions to ask for longtime fans like myself. Uh, new fans, though, I'm curious. If you're new to, newer to Venom and you haven't gone through the lore, I'm curious to what you think of this. Does the continuity issues, do you even notice them? I'm guessing not. Um, but, uh, you know, if you have any theories or, or, or just opinions about this book, about what you're liking, disliking, whatever it is, let me know down below. And for the rest of you long-term fans and people who know more than I do, please, like if I'm getting something wrong here, let me know down in the comments. And with all of you, as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Uh, but that's it for this episode. I got to go. I got to get ready for work. So hopefully I can get this edited and posted in time before I leave. So thank you so much for watching the show. As always, I have more Venom content to you very, very soon. And I'll also have some Comic-Con stuff coming up for you very soon as well. Uh, so yes, I'm recording this on July 2nd. So you're actually getting a new video from me. Uh, and, and you're getting me with my pacemaker, uh, me with my energy, like a more energy right now. Um, and and uh, me with uh, a lot of thanks for, for all of you guys sticking around and waiting for me to get back on my feet. I'm finally getting there. I'm working out all the, you know, the other stuff, the personal stuff I have going on. And we have the move coming up next week, like literally in like a week and a half, I'm moving. So I'll be, you know, recording stuff for that. And I'll make a really cool vlog of leaving this apartment in the second episode of moving into the new apartment and kind of decking it out with really cool stuff. So you'll see all that coming up very soon, but I'll try to have some more Venom content to you in the meantime. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.